interested in, helping kids and adults discover engineering and maybe doing that through engineers. We, but again, the kinds of things that we can help you with are available to you to use any time of year. You can visit a classroom or an after school group. You can bring students to your workplace or college campus. And as we go through this presentation, you're going to learn about the resources we have to support these kinds of activities for you. You could mentor a group of students. It could be um, through an after school group like Girl Scouts. There's all kinds of ways to do that. We also have a program with museums called Discovery Family Day. Museums are great resources and places for non-engineers to engage. Um, you could make a presentation at a middle or high school career day. And you'll see a new tool we have for that later in the presentation. And then we also have a program, our Future City Competition for middle school kids. And actually, regional competitions are going on right now in January. There's still time for you to get involved this year. And we want to let you know about this program for the coming year. Next slide. So Celebrate Engineering, this is one of the core reasons we have Engineers Week, to really celebrate engineering, to talk about the positive contributions engineers make in society, and to recognize those who make these contributions, and also to tell the public about them. So a typical activity might be to organize an Engineers Week lunch or dinner, and an easy way to do this might be a very simple lunch within a company or an organization. Um, secure a public proclamation. We have tips on how you could do that with mayors, um, town councils, that kind of thing. And those generally get picked up in area newspapers. Again, recognizing an individual. Many organizations recognize their young engineers or engineers who have contributed either in the community or to their organization. And this is a great way to celebrate engineering by talking about what individuals have really accomplished. And then use effective engineering messages to do that. We have done a lot of research about the kinds of messages that resonate with children and adults about who engineers are and what they do. We have an entire toolkit dedicated to that at discovery.org. And these have been tested, tried and true. So this is another resource that can help you as you're doing your outreach. And with that, let me turn it over to Christy and IEEE. OK, thanks. Thanks, Leslie. Um, uh, next slide, please. So number three on the list is the Introduce the Girls to Engineering Day. And that is planned for February 20th this year. I'm really proud to say that IEEE USA is the leader and sponsor for 2014. Um, if you're listening on this web webcast, you likely already know that women are very underrepresented in the engineering community. So Introduce a Girl to Engineering Day really is meant to shine a spotlight on this issue and, and intended to help inspire all of us to take action. So if you're looking for things you can do, I would say that the biggest thing you can do is to provide some mentoring to the young women you know. Um, take the action, actually, just to help a young woman in your family or in your community to discover engineering. Um, we have several ideas here on the slide. So you can do hands-on activities with a group of girls, perhaps a Girl Scout troop, for example. Um, invite girls to your workplace or college campus for a tour. Uh, a, a lot of universities uh, have, hold specific outreach events geared to this kind of thing in particular. I can speak to um, experience at, uh, with the University of Texas at Austin here. They even hold special a whole day just for Introducing Girls to Engineering Day. And it's just meant for kids um, to have a lot of fun and see what engineering is all about and actually get their hands on uh, hands-on activities and games and get them excited about engineering. Now, if you're a female engineer, you have even more to offer in this regard. Um, you can actually offer to speak at local events. Um, you might set up lunches with other young women. Um, basically, as a female engineer, you're really the role model for these girls. Uh, it's important that girls can begin to visualize themselves in engineering in the future. So yes, out of this list, I hope this gives you some good ideas on how you can contribute to Girl Day this year. Next slide. So the fourth thing on our list here 
um, that you can do for Engineering Week is to nominate a middle school or high school educator who's really gone the extra mile to help teach engineering concepts in their curriculum. Definitely for this one, I want to make sure you visit discovere.org. And there you'll find all of the information about exactly how to nominate someone. There's good incentive to do this. There's a good $2,000 cash prize for the winner and a paid trip to Washington. OK, all right. And so <sighs> OK, I'll, I'll keep going. There's a, there's a $2,000 cash prize and a trip to Washington, D.C. for the award ceremony. So this is, again, a really great way to recognize these amazing, amazing educators who are working to support the future of our profession. Next slide. And I'm going to, I'm going to, this is Leslie, I'm going to pick up um, where Christy left off for the moment. And here are some ways you can spread the word about Engineers Week and what you're doing to celebrate engineering or reach out in your communities through your employers, through your um, professional associations and engineering groups. And on our website, you're going to be able to um, find the resources you need to um, implement some of these. So a few simple things you can just let other people know, particularly within your company or organization. Um, send an announcement to the editors of those kinds of, or, of um, publications, or perhaps there's an internal blog. Um, there are ways to advertise Engineers Week on lobby and hallway monitors at work or in engineering schools. Simply include Engineers Week dates and logos as with your um, email signature, and we have the resources for you to do that. Simply sit down uh, over a brown bag lunch and a particular topic with um, students or colleagues about engineering. And for those of you who have access, partner with your communications team to post a message from the engineering leader within your organization. Sort of that um, buy-in from the top will really help spread the message. And you may already have some education programs and resources with messaging that would really already work for Engineers Week. And you can just sort of fold them into this, this larger collaborative movement. Next slide. So here we get to some of the nitty gritty. You know, how do you get started? Well, it depends on whether you're doing it from your workplace or maybe as a volunteer with an association. And we have found that typically the departments within a, um, a company or an employer that organize volunteers and engineers week types of programs are in community relations, may come out of engineering um, and a small group that comes together, out of human resources, particularly those where they want to get to college students, and also employee volunteerism councils. There are also some affinity groups within companies that like to organize Engineers Week programs or outreach programs. And you may check with each of these departments, ask how you can personally get involved, and maybe how the organization might want to start to get involved. Next slide. So here are some of the resources that we have for you. And we're going to talk a little more about these in the next few slides so that you get some ideas for how you might use them. Every year, there's a theme for Engineers Week. This year, it is the theme, Let's Make a Difference, which is also our organizational um, theme, if you will. We have free volunteer kits. Now, the, the materials from those kits are pretty much available online. They are for both Girl Day and for Engineers Week. There's a slight difference in, in them. They also have a poster you can put up. There are hands-on activities. You can just follow along, more ideas. Um, but you can also find that at discovery.org. We have tons of hands-on activities that are project-based so that kids can really roll up their sleeves and go through the engineering design process with you. They are age and grade appropriate. Those are also discovery at discovery.org. We have a new turnkey career presentation. It was developed with, um, for, by career counselors in middle and high school, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But that's also available for those volunteers who are tapped to do career day programs. We have volunteer training available online, sort of walking you through what the process is. We have a new photo library. I'll talk about that. And downloadable logos so that you can customize a number of things um, with us. And then we also can access and connect you to other partners we have in our coalition. 
Next slide. So here I'm going to also call on our, our friends, Christy and Jen, if she's been able to get on. And some ideas on how you can use the theme. We've used it, as I mentioned, in our volunteer posters about engineers. We use it in, we use it in awards programs. If we talk about young engineers um, who are being nominated for our various awards and how they've made a difference, or the educators who we will be awarding and how they've made a difference. Christy, do you have some thoughts on how IEEE might be using this? Yeah, definitely. Um, here in Austin, we have a lot of activities that are planned for Engineers Week um, just through the IEEE. So what we've done is we, we focus on the celebration of engineering aspect, and a lot of our IEEE chapters will present uh, give a different presentation each day during E-Week. So one thing we can do is, is use the Let's Make a Difference Discover E logo on our advertising to really tie it all together. And you know that's just helpful to show that these individual events are really all part of one cohesive E-Week program. Mm -hmm. Nice. Has, has Jen joined us? Hi. Hello, everyone. This is Jen. I'm actually dialing in live from the, uh, the DuPont Engineering Excellence Awards. <laughs> um, so yes, I wanted to let you know that the way that we've utilized um, these kits, actually, that have been online, they've been wonderful because what we've done is we've incorporated some of the activities and the ideas and the posters and that sort of thing with some of the events that we're already doing. For example, we do an Explore Engineering event, and so our organizers and the folks in the schools that are participating, We've made them aware of these posters and the events that they can download from the Discover E site. And also for Girl Day, we've incorporated some aspects of Girl Day, or Get a Girl into Engineering Day, with our work that we do with the Girl Scout troop here in Wilmington, Delaware. We have an event called Engineering Year Tomorrow, and so we work with some local Girl Scout troops. And, and we've also been working within DuPont with our local diversity networks, especially the women's network to send this out, and it's sort of a call for action to say, here's where you go, here's some activities, get the word out, and pass it around to your schools and your community. Great, Jen, thanks. Next slide. So Jen mentioned how DuPont has used the um, Engineers Week and Girl Day kits, and you can see what the art looks like for those of you who maybe don't have your kits yet. This is generally um, pulled from the poster. You, the kits are free, both the Girl Day and Engineers Week kits are free um, with underwriting from our partners. Uh, Girl Day was uh, partially underwritten by IEEE. Posters, activities. Uh, Christy, any comments on how IEEE is distributing or using the, the kits and posters? Well, I think the posters are particularly ideal for um, a classroom. You know, if you're a teacher, hanging up one of these just starts to bring more visibility into engineering and, and may spark some curiosity among the students. But um, I've also simply used a poster to uh, put it up at work and remind folks, um, again, we should, we should celebrate the profession and also look for ways to reach out to the next generation, um, the future engineers. So. That's my, that's my suggestion. Thanks. Next slide, please. So I mentioned hands-on activities earlier. And um, you would also maybe hear reference to them for, by project-based learning or project-based activities. And this is where kids really do. So volunteers can lead them through an activity and connect them to the engineering involved. You know. Um, we have more than 50 activities. Um, if anybody here is from outside uh, North America and you need uh, some of these in other languages, we do have them. Uh, for those of you who have connections through your associations or corporations with other parts of the world that might like them, please let them, you know, your folks know that they're available. And you can sort online by age, discipline, the amount of time. And we've had more than 4,000 activities downloaded since we put them up in this new site since November. And we are building um, a sort of numbers around this, how, how many kids will be reached, um, all kinds of great data we're trying to collect. And you can see from the um, little slide here that you can go on and say, I'm a volunteer, or I'm a parent, I'm a student, I'm an educator. And there's something for everybody here. 
we sort of the activities that way, but there are also videos for kids um, that come with a do-it-yourself, hands-on activity that go with it. Um, Jen, have you any advice for folks wanting to use some of the hands-on activities? Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I was really excited when I went onto the site um, and saw all of the different types of activities that you guys have on the website. I think they're extremely beneficial for classrooms and, and especially the STEM schools, but really any of the disciplines that our children are learning. And one of the aspects that I really like about these hands-on activities is that it speaks to the new national guidelines on science, right, and, and the standards that have been set up looking at science and engineering from a holistic perspective. And these activities really allow the children to think in different ways, to apply scientific principles, and engage in a, in a manner that's quite different from just a lecture or a normal classroom experience. Christy, how about your thoughts? Yeah, I think I'd just piggyback onto what uh, Jen said, but uh, there's just an enormous amount of content on the website. And uh, I still have found new new things each time I've gone on, on to the website. Um, one of the things I really like is above and beyond just the hands-on activities, there's some even easier things you can do, like setting up tours. Um, so you maybe you're planning a road trip uh, with your family, for example. You can take a look at the website just for some ideas on ways that you could um, put more interaction into the trip and uh, map out some interesting stops. So. There's a lot of great ideas there, and I, again, you could spend a lot of time looking through all of that. So, Great. Next slide, please. And this is the new presentation I mentioned. Um, it was done in collaboration with counselors, uh, primarily 8th through 11th grades. And we've talked to a number of engineering students and young engineers who, as they've gotten more into their curriculum or job, say, wow, I wish I had really known different things about engineering than what was presented to me, or maybe they didn't have enough information um, as, as they were coming through pre-college and then on into college. So with the counselor community, we've talked a lot um, with counselors about their needs, and we did a lot around how to talk with students uh, for counselors. They came back to us and said, we've been doing this for a while now, and it's really working. We really love it. But what we want, really want is a toolkit that we can use, a turnkey presentation that we can use with five students or 500. And this is our Inspire Innovation Discover Engineering Careers Toolkit. And what you will find in this, it's available. What you will find in this also are embedded videos. You see this um, young woman, Ariel. And there are embedded videos of college students who support the points we heard uh, young people want to hear. So they talk about. Um, the support they get in college, the, how they got there, whether they came from a community college. You know, there are different pathways to get there. Uh, so it is the first audience for this is counselors, the pre-college counselors, as I mentioned. You can simply let them know this is available if you're volunteering. But it's also highly adaptable for a volunteer who is making a presentation at a career day. There are also a number of downloadables with this. Um, you know, the 10 best reasons to consider engineering. There also, there's also information for parents, so they can have conversations with their kids around this, figuring the parents generally aren't going to know a lot about engineering. Um, Jen, have you had a chance to look at this, explore this toolkit at all from your perspective as a volunteer? Yes, I mean, it's really good. And I think what it speaks to is about how we need to talk about engineering, right, and get kids excited about it and see it as a potential for them. And so, you know, I think it'll, it's in alignment with some other initiatives that have been going on lately, like with, you know, Changing the Equation, which is a website you can go to, um, changetheequation.org. You can see some information on there. It's a coalition of CEOs and nonprofits, nonpartisan groups that are really focused on improving the quality of science, technology, engineering, mathematics in the United States. And so knowing that and knowing the next generation scientist standards and also the core curriculum that is being taught within our schools, I think there's really going to be a high level of awareness around engineering. And if we make it exciting and use these tools that you've also given you know, to our teachers and our educators, then you can really empower these children to go experience engineering and find out more. So I think it's great. 
Christy, any comments? Yeah, Leslie, I like the point that you um, alluded to later too, that the toolkit is not just for teachers and guidance counselors, but it's for, it's for parents too. In fact, uh, one thing I learned in looking through that material was that um, parents, and particularly moms, are the biggest influencers in the career decision of their children. So that's something to re you know, really think about. If, even if you're showing this information to teachers and to the students themselves, what about the parents? Are they convinced? Do they know what engineering um, can offer their children? So um, definitely, definitely has a broad use. And uh, Leslie, I think you covered all of the content pretty well. I, I definitely encourage use of it. Thanks, Christy. Next slide. Uh, this slide and the next one, again, are resources for you. I, I alluded to earlier the volunteer training piece. So how do you lead kids through a successful engineering experience? So we have a self-guided tutorial online for you. We also have the messages that will resonate with kids and typically those kinds of things as a lead-in to a discussion about engineering would be, and you know, do you want to help people? Engineering really helps people. Do you want to work in teams? There, there's some very simple basic information on how to present engineering to open the conversation that will really get you a long way. Um, also, you'll learn strategies for leading hands-on activities, uh, you know, even simple things like don't let kids sit in swivel chairs if you want to maintain control. A lot of frequently asked questions and tips for setting, for setting up a visit, whether it's an after-school group, a Girl Scout troop, um, or a classroom visit. Next slide. This is new, and you will find it at our downloadable resources. We have created a photo library, and it is um, copyright free. We have found uh, a lot of our volunteers have adopted a lot of the engineering messages that I talked about. You know, engineering is a very helping profession. Engineers work in teams, et cetera, et cetera. And now, then the, the quest became, are there images that underpin those messages? We can say it, but we really have to provide um, images that can un underscore those messages. That engineering is fun. And you can see from this that we have started to put together this library. You can download them to create your own handouts or announcements um, in terms of outreach activities. And we will be adding to this library, but um, we hope you will take advantage of this. Again, they are copyright free, done especially for the engineering community. Uh, Jen, and, and comments on this on how DuPont or you might use this, or maybe you already have. Yeah, we've actually used this in some of our um, some of our communications throughout our company. You know, internally, I think it's just a really good resource. Um, you know, to get you know to put on your websites or to put in little pamphlets or on posters or whatever. It's great. Uh, Christy for IEEE and maybe the the volunteer community on that side. Yeah, I mean the same thing. This is this saves our our volunteers a whole lot of time and uh, effort. You know, there's just to capture pictures like this. Um, of kids is is quite a complicated effort, um, especially if you want to share them with the public. So um, it's a great resource, and I, I know we all really appreciate the work Discovery did to put this together. Great. Next slide. And here for our participants today, we also have a number of downloadable logos. You can see the Engineers Week logo in a couple of different formats, a vertical and a horizontal. And we are encouraging you to use these logos on your materials to really connect and brand your Engineers Week or Girl Day activity as part of the larger movement within the engineering community, whether that's through one organization or a coalition of organizations. We really want to show the public that there is a huge movement in engineering volunteerism and outreach that is all collaborating. Um, Christy, any thoughts again on how IEEE has used some of these? Well, you know, we have we have all kinds of events for our Engineers Week, and again, this makes it very easy to to find the logos you want to tie that whole message together of. Uh, this is this one activity is part of a, a larger effort and larger initiative. I, you know, I just have to 
I can't say enough about how great the, the new website is. Um, it is really easy to use and very well organized. Great. Jen, some thoughts on the logo um, pieces no, I just, and branding? I, I think that they're really helpful to use. It also raises awareness for the foundation. And like uh -huh. uh, Christy was saying, and all the other you know partners and sponsors, and, and so you know if maybe folks have never heard of you know Engineers Week Foundation before, with, you know the previous name and now Discover E, and so it's really raising awareness for you, you guys, and all the work that you do, and all your partners. So I've been trying to use them in all communications. Great. At this point, we're going to, and, and just to remind folks, we are going to take questions at the end of this, but we're very excited this year to be partnering with uh, Curious George. After all, engineering is not about curiosity, right? So it's to turn it over to Gabe from WGBH. He's going to um, help us understand how Curious George can uh, help us teach others about engineering. Gabe? Thank you so much, and thanks for everybody who stayed to hear what Curious George offers as a partner uh, in this effort to engage youth. What George uniquely brings to the table is younger kids, kids who adore and are captivated by his antics. Uh, the show targets uh, preschool through first or second grade, but I assure you we get emails from college students. Um, we're in an enviable position at PBS in that uh, children and their parents selectively tune us in and they are eager viewers uh, and they eat up these stories where George is dismantling the clock to see how it works or approaching some other challenge through trial and error. It's our goal with Curious George to bring basic science, math, and engineering concepts to life within our storylines. And two independent studies done in the last two years confirm that the public television episodes online educational games, our outreach, as well as some new Curious George books that have been published to tie into specific episode storylines. They've demonstrably increased young children's knowledge of various STEM concepts that have been covered. And parents have told us, I never would have thought to talk about such things with my child, but she's so into it. So it's music to our ears. Next slide. So how do you capitalize on the excitement of Curious George? Um, and where do you find activities that we've created for this preschool to early elementary set of children? First, George activities are in Discover E's volunteer kit. I didn't make that point on my slide, but I do want to remind folks that that kit is free, and you can order it from the Discover E website. Also on that website, under Cool Content and Activities, which is one of the tabs across the top, if you click there, you'll find two Curious George activities, one involving uh, simple pinwheels to explore the concept of wind power. The second activity shows children you can create new things from recycled materials. I can promise you a very warm reception from kids when you let Curious George be the ambassador to these hands-on activities and these concepts. Um, they'll be totally tuned into you. Um, and before I leave you, and I hope some of you will have questions, but before I leave you, let me also say that premiering today, actually, is a new Curious George STEM collection on pbslearningmedia.org. And if you don't know about this resource, uh, you should check it out. It's an online library of classroom-ready activities, projects that are paired with video bits from PBS programs, so programs from Curious George to Nova. It's a free service. It's sharing these great videos from the PBS archives. Um, you definitely want to take a look. And that's it for Curious George, unless people have questions at the end. OK, so this is Christy again. And um, I want to talk about a. Uh, a new activity we're announcing this year called App eFeet, which is a new competition that's, uh, that's launched by the IEEE USA this year. So Leslie was talking earlier that um, the way we message engineering to kids is extremely important. You know, it's easy for some of us who've, who've been through the, through the field to say, um, you know, you've got to have a lot of math and science and it's going to be a lot of hard work. All, 
all exactly the wrong things that would uh, resonate with students. Um, instead, we should talk about how they make a world of difference with engineering, or how um, you can turn your dreams into reality with engineering. Those are the messages that grab their attention. So Appy Feet is really all about ringing home that message that engineers make a world of difference. Um, students you know, regularly hear about problems in their community or in other countries, and they want to know, how can they help? So what we want to do with Appy Feet is engage these students with these problems and challenge them to use their imagination and to their mobile devices to help make a difference in the world. We'll be launching this competition during Engineers Week, so be sure to check our website, appefeet.org, in the next few weeks to find out how to participate. Um, if you go to the website today, there is a landing page, but it's not quite, not quite finished, but we will, be, uh, we will be ready before Engineers Week, so definitely check back at that time. The contest is going to be open to all ages, and programming is not required. So basically, to participate, you simply need to describe and mock up some pictures of what your app would do and how it would look. So again, we're, we're looking to engage a very large audience and really drive home that message that engineers make a world of difference. Next slide. OK, so with social media, there's all kinds of ways um, you can help us spread the word about Engineers Week. Like us on Facebook. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, definitely, if you plan to use Twitter for any of your eWeek activities, be sure to include the hashtag eWeek2014 in your communication. Um, that, again, pulls it all together in a, in a cohesive manner that we can all leverage. Uh, additionally, we would love to hear about all of the activities you have planned uh, around the country, both during Engineers Week and after. Um, these are activities that highlight what you're doing to encourage the next generation of engineers or just to celebrate engineering in general. So definitely go to the Discovery website, add your activities to the calendar, and we'll subsequently help your advertising as well. Next slide. Okay, so here we got a whole bunch of events coming up for, um, for Engineers Week. So on uh, Thursday, February 13th, we're going to have a College Edition webinar. Um, the purpose of this webinar is really twofold. First, we want to make college students feel connected both to the larger engineering profession and to the discovery community. And second, we want to announce nominees for this year's College Edition Award. The webinar is going to start with a featured panelist from NCEES, DuPont, Lockheed Martin, and IEEE USA, who are going to start the conversation by just sharing their personal stories regarding the best advice I ever got. Uh, so that should be pretty interesting. But in conclusion of the webinar, they're also going to talk about the live, or announce the live, um, who actually got the nominees this year for this year's award. So that should be a good one to tune into. On uh, February 19th, we'll be starting Girl Day STEM Chat on Twitter. Last year, Discovery did this, and that was the first time we ever did it. But we trended with over 1,000 tweets about how to encourage girls to consider engineering. Um, because the event was so successful, they're going to do it again. So um, if you'd like to add your voice to the conversation, definitely join on uh, February 19th. And uh, do we have a hashtag we can share for that yet? Yes, the hashtag is um, pound sign uh, girl day 20, 2014. Excuse me, hashtag girl day 2014. All there was right. late-breaking news. <laughs> Thanks for that late-breaking news. OK, um, so another cool, cool uh, activity on the horizon is uh, the hashtag Advice for Engineers Twitter campaign. Uh, during Engineers Week, we want you to share with us over Twitter the best advice you've ever received or been given. So you'll hear from. We have industry leaders who are going to be participating on Twitter with this hashtag, but we also want you to participate. So you can start thinking now about what you'd like to share, and then uh, be sure to tweet about it during Engineers Week. Another activity the IEEE will be putting on um, is sponsored particularly by the Women in Engineering part of IEEE. We're hosting a program called Live Chat Online. So this is a great opportunity to connect and speak with women engineers from around the world live. You can actually ask them questions, learn about their technology or career or their volunteer work. 
And then following Engineers Week, it doesn't all end in February, as we know, um, in March, there's a, another really awesome event called uh, Global Marathon. And this event is kind of like a global town square where women in engineering and technology can connect and discuss issues relevant to women around the world. The event is online, it's free, and it spans three days with a new theme each day. I attended this event last year, and I really found it to be a great use of my time. Even though it was a fully online event, I, I felt like I was there with the speaker and had the opportunity to ask questions. So again, I definitely encourage, uh, encourage you to attend the event and, and share it with your, your peers. And with that, I think we're on to the last, last slide here. Yes, this is Thea, and yes, we have a question from Jim Wynn at IBM asking, how do we search our activity database to find an activity? And uh, do you want me to take that one, Leslie? Sure. 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 So Jim, it's simply, um, there's sort functionalities. You can, you can sort by age, time, and um, discipline. So you can, you can narrow the field that way, but all of the activities that were on our old website have to If there's one that we missed, certainly let us know as you go through. Um, you can always just hit the load more button. Yes, Jim, that's Jim Wynn at IBM. Um, and so a lot of questions have come in about is there a place to view and print today's presentation afterwards. And we will load um, the, uh, the PDF of the, uh, of the PowerPoint directly to, um, to our website so folks can download it and use it that way. And we'll also, um, we have a recording of this and uh, we will post that recording from our website too. And for those of you um, we have, who registered, We'll send you a link to both of those locations. Um, and is the presentation available to share with others? Everything we do is available to share with others. Um, okay, Jim wants to know, is there a search method without going through all of them to using load more? No, we didn't have a search functionality where you could search by, um, by title yet, Jim. That's for version 2.0. Sorry about that. Uh, trying to, those seem to be, if anyone has any specific questions about the resources or um, for the presenters, um, oh, can the Discover E logo be used on t-shirts? Leslie. Absolutely. Now we say that, but we are a nonprofit. And we are allowed to use for non-commercial purposes. So certainly if you have them, you want them for volunteers at events, that kind of thing, absolutely. Robin asks, last year you had a list of more activities, a two-page thing. Will you have this again? Um, I believe that was part of the uh, volunteer kit. Is that correct, Robin? And, I, and there is a list of additional activities that's in the volunteer kit. Oh, this is a great question. Uh, someone wants to know how to submit an item to include in our Discover e-newsletter. Leslie? Um, well, first we hope you are registered for the newsletter. Thea, is there, is there an email specifically for the newsletter online? Uh, I think if they send it to info at discovere.org um, right. and just say this is for... Yep. And we'd love to get that. So for those of you listening, again, we are very transparent, and our goal is to share what we, what we provide with as many as possible. And one thing we love to do is share examples of what's going on. So please let us know about your activities, and there's actually a way you can post that online. Thea, do you want to mention that? Oh, for your events? Yes, yeah. if you go to... Um, if you go to the website, right from the home page, you can click on events and um, get to the events listing page. And there's a green button there, a lovely green button that says add your event to our calendar. And you submit your event idea and then we post it on our upcoming uh, calendar. And then uh, we have another question from uh, Kendra asking, uh, would you advertise our events on your Twitter and Facebook page? And Kendra, if these are 
um, uh, engineer related engineer week related activities and events and you know promoting um, outreach to kids uh, we will put it put it first on our event calendar and then we um, and you can in, uh, send us an email info at discovery.org and we can see about putting it on our Facebook page and tweeting about it as well okay all right any other questions and I'm, I don't know if I unmuted. Gay, I'm unmuting you. Gay or Jen or Christy, anything you want to add to today's um, conversation? Nope. nope. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Everyone can now see that I have a another event starting. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, Amy asked if we have lapel pins for people to order. Amy, the best place to find that is, if we do, I'm not sure that we do, is um, in the shop section of our website. And I don't know, if, I know that we've had them in the past and I don't know if we still have them. And uh, Leslie, here's a question. Do we have a representative per state to get involved with Discover E? No. No. So what would someone do if they wanted to get involved in Discover E, if you could just repeat that? Oh, I'm sorry. What was the question? I might have misunderstood. Do we have a representative per state to get involved with Discover E and Engineers Week? Uh, no, we don't. And if somebody, again, wants to send to info at discovery.org, um, we'd be glad to talk with you, um, certainly to understand um, what the interest is. Yes. And if you email us at dis info at discovery.org, we can help connect you to various folks. Right. And Robin knows that we have lapel pins on our shop. Thank you, Robin. Um, you, win the, you win the free lapel pin of the day award uh, for, for, for giving us that information. Uh, so uh, Kimberly Austin asks, I noticed there are activities at the high school and under level. Will there be options for college students? Um, at this time, we haven't um, categorized any uh, activities at the college level, but um, the best thing about hands-on engineering activities is I know that uh, activities we've created for students in the middle school level and high school level can be done with college students because they just get Don't more Don't forget students. Curious George, the uh, And Curious George activities. College students. They have but I was going to add. Hey, Thea, I would add Appy Feet as well. Um, that'll be a competition open to college students too. And at that level, they may actually want to participate by even programming their app. So there's more there too. All right. Okay, so Kendra says she's a representative at Rutgers University and they have a whole week's worth of activities that they would like to post. Great, Kendra, put that on the events. And um, we'll get back to you about other ways that we can um, pump up the volume on what's going on at Rutgers. So thanks for all your efforts there. Um, Jim Wynn raised his hand and wants to know, what does that do for me? Um, Jim, it doesn't do much. The best place is to put your question in the question box. <laughs> all right. I think that's it for the questions. Um, all right, and Chelsea wants everyone to know they have a huge event on February 22nd at the University of Kentucky that's already on the website. Thanks, Chelsea. Um, okay, and we have a regional coordinator for Math Counts, which takes place nationwide in February, and they want everyone to know that that's happening too. Um, and we can put that on the uh, calendar listing, uh, Cynthia. And, uh, and IBM says they carry out a year-long eWeek Discover Engineering uh, campaign globally. And I think on that note, we want to encourage everyone to not think of engineering outreach as a one-day or one-week event, but something year-long. So I'd like to thank today's panelists, uh, Gay Moorbacher, uh, Christy, uh, Jen from DuPont, who I believe, Leslie uh, Collins, the executive director. Um, if anyone has any questions or wants more information, simply send us an email at info at discovery.org. Thanks, everyone.
The organizer has ended the session, and this call.